that are going to speak on preparing for student teaching and what needs to happen this semester. Um, we're going to start off with certification and we're going to talk about advising and then I'm going to talk about the application process and what that's going to look like. And so we will get started and this Misty Corn will kick us off. Howdy y'all. I think I've spoken to most of you. How many have I not seen and seen my dog and pony show? Just a few? Okay, good. How many of you have already gone through and done your request to register and have registered at least? Awesome. We're off to a good start. Okay, for those of you I have not seen, College of Education says you must, at the very minimum, attempt your content exams prior to student teaching. So that means your generalist exam, your math science 4 through 8, your ELA, your secondary exams need to at least be attempted prior to going in the classroom in the fall. Don't wait to do this this summer. I really want you to have this done by <coughs> May 1st. In order to get approval to test, you'll need to log in to the mycehd.tamu.edu website. You will click on Academic Services. The drop-down box will take you to Certification. And under Certification, you will choose Methods Block Students. All of this is listed on the website, and it is in the order in which you need to do these steps. If you do them out of order, it's going to cause us a little hiccup. <clears throat> the first thing is to create a TEAL account. This is your information with TEA. When you create this account, your name on this account must match exactly what it is on your driver's license. If your middle name is spelled out, spell it out on this form. If it's an initial, just put your initial. Because I think I've probably worked with some of you, you've made this mistake and it's held you up and you've had to work with TEA to correct it, so best thing to do is make sure we get it right the first time. You must use your A&M email address. Social Security and birth date must be accurate. After you fill that form out, TEA is going to send you an email, usually within a couple days. That email will have your TEA ID in it. And you will need that to complete the content exam information form. Once again, whatever you put on this content exam information form must be identical to what you put on your TEAL account and your driver's license. One thing I want to really emphasize with this TEA ID, that is yours for the lifetime as an educator. I do not have access. I cannot give you that TEA ID number. I can't retrieve it for you. When you set up your account and password, that is yours. Should you forget it or lose it, and you have to go through the system with TEA, you have to talk to them directly, and that is a long wait on the telephone. So hold on to that. Also, we've had quite a bit of memory lapse. Please. Understand, when you submit this form, it does not automatically upload to TEA. It is a manual process that I have to go through, and please give me at least 48 hours to get it in the system. I try to do it every day, so if you fill it out at 9 o'clock in the morning, give me until 5 o'clock that afternoon to have it uploaded. Sometimes it doesn't work that quickly. So I get a lot of emails, <coughs> I just filled out the form, but I can't register it. Yeah, it's going to be a while. You'll also need to create an ETS user account. This is the site that you will register for your exam. So you have to do the TEA account, which is the TEAL account, and the ETS account. They are two separate things, but they are both important. The ETS account is where you're actually going to go in and register for your exam. When you get to that site, at the very top, it'll give you a link to click on that says register. From that point, it will give a drop down for the exams that you are approved to register for. At that point, you'll do this individually for each exam. So if you're EC6 generalist, you will take that exam. 
You will also have the ESL exam. So you'll have to do it individually for each one. Again, May 1st, deadline to take your exams, please. You are going to receive approvals for whichever concentration area you are in. There has been a hiccup with the database giving you guys the additional middle grades folks that need the generalists. It wasn't giving you both exam approvals. I think we've got that fixed. But if you are a 4th through 8th person and you get in there to register and it's only got math science or it's only got ELA, shoot me an email and we will, we will fix that. But I think working with IT, I think we've got it straight now. So when I uploaded this morning, it did give both approvals. So I think we're good. <coughs> Any questions about what exams you'll be approved for? The ETS website is really, really good about giving you guys all the specific information you need. This will tell you exactly what you can bring into the testing site the day of the test. It will tell you how early to arrive. There's also great information there to prepare you for the exam. There's free information where you can download the actual test exam and look at it, go over it all before you get in there. <coughs> Um, the math science, the English language arts, reading social studies, the BTLPT, those are all considered limited administered tests. If you are taking one of those and you have not registered for it yet, I strongly encourage you to do that today. At least look at the dates. Because they're limited means they're not offered all the time. The computer administered test, you can pretty much take those any day of the week all semester long. The limited administered are not that way. So your schedule is limited. You'll want to take a look and make sure. Now I will say most of these test dates are filling up and they do fill up quickly, especially if you want to take them here at a and I looked the other day, there's lots of openings the week of spring break. I know you don't want to spend your spring break taking an exam, but there are still openings that day. I recommend you doing that so you don't miss any classes and certainly get this done so you don't have to do it during the summer. Each test is $120. You will pay for it when you register. <coughs> if you take multiple exams, yes, you have to pay the $120 for each exam. Scores will be available to you usually pretty quickly. I don't know if anybody in here has taken one that can already that maybe could tell us how quick they got their results back? Two days? Is that what I heard? Great. Usually they're, they're pretty quick. You'll get an email to tell you your score report. I'll get an email that says you've either passed or didn't pass your exam. If you do not successfully pass your exam the first time, you must wait 45 days before you can even go back in and register. So make sure when you go in to take that test that you're pre well prepared and you're serious about it in the right frame of mind and all that because you don't want to wait. Plus it's another 120 bucks. Multiple testing sites, when you go in, you'll get to pick where you want to take your exam. So if you choose Texas A&M and you look and there's no dates available or nothing that suits you, you're going to have to go back in and choose a different spot. You'll have to choose Sam Houston. Or if you are going home one weekend to Houston, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, you'd get a little more option. There was a question about score reports when I talked a couple weeks ago as far as what districts see when they get ready to hire you. They see pass or fail. That's it. So 240 is what you need to pass, and that's all they're going to see is pass or fail. So when you go to apply for jobs, you don't have to worry about them seeing that you only passed by 242 because they won't know. When you go to take your exam, you're going to have to bring your ID with you. Again, it's going to have to be identical. Yes, ma'am? Can they see like how many times you take it? Uh, <coughs> so. They see the latest one. I think, I think that's all they see. Because their screen is different than mine, but I do think... Now, I can see how many times you've attempted it. They, I don't think, can see that. I think when they look at your profile, they just see your pass or fail. 
So the day of, you need to take your ID and all of the other information that you want to know, like can I have a calculator, do I get scratch paper, all that good stuff is in the registration bulletin on the ETS website. Also on the ETS website, if anyone needs accommodations, um, additional testing time, additional breaks, so forth, there is a link on the ETS website. And you do have to go through a rather lengthy process to get that approved by ETS prior to registration. So if you do need accommodations, start working on that as quickly as possible because it does take a while and you can't even register until it's been approved. Uh, do not bring your phone that day. Don't bring anything else. There's no place to store it. Just leave it in your car. Bring your keys. If you show up and you've got your test ticket in hand and your ID does not match, they will not let you in. And your score will be reported as a no-show and you lose $120 and you wait 45 days to register again. So do not forget that test ticket and make sure it matches your ID. <laughs> On the MyCEHD website, under the methods block, you will see all these links. This is pretty much a carbon copy of what's on the website. All of the things are links. The test preparation material will take you there. The T-CERT website is another free preparation for the exams. And the PACT website is great for everybody to use, and it too is free, and you should have access to that. And again, all of this is on the website under methods blog. No child left behind requirements. I think that only applies to the fourth through eighth folks, and we have already met and gone into great depth over that. Is there anybody that has questions about the fourth through eight meeting the generalist exam? I want to reiterate, though, for you fourth through eight folks, you do need to take this exam. You will have to have this exam to be hired. However, when graduation rolls around in December, I can't give you a certificate with a generalist exam on it. You have to add that after. But you will need it. You likely be required by any district that wants to hire you to have that. But I can't issue that. A&M does not have approval to do that. We got special permission to let you take the test, so you have to add it at the end when you're done. Districts are aware of this policy, they understand, they know, so you're in good shape. And again, they'll be able to see that in your, in your TEA profile that you have taken the exam. Here is my contact information. Again, it's on the my CHD website. Any questions or concerns that you encounter while trying to register, shoot me an email, give me a call, come by, see me, and we will work it out. What questions can I answer for you guys? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I don't think I put my middle name on my registration. Can I go in and change that? Probably not. Oh, that's great. <coughs> you need to call TEA directly. Okay. And have you, have you been able to register for your exams? And your middle name is on your driver's license, but not on I any of these forms? I, I don't know if it's on the form, so I would go in there. Um, send me an email, okay. and I can look at okay. your your TA profile and see if it's in there. Okay. And I can also, if it wasn't, if your TA profile and the form you filled out for me don't match, you wouldn't have been allowed to register. Okay. But we need to make sure it matches your driver's license. Okay. Yes? And you said we needed to bring a registration ticket with us. Is that if we've already registered for our test, would they email it to me? Um, they should email you it if you need it. Now that maybe has gone away. That may be something they don't use anymore. I got no You got no confirmation. Okay. If you don't get anything, I wouldn't worry about it then. And I'll actually, when I get back to the office, I'll look too to make sure that that that's gone away. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Did you hear that? Yeah, I think I, I've gone back and accessed the same page. Yes? Um, what if you didn't use your A&M? 
Um, see if you can go back in and change that. Okay. You can change it. I changed mine. Okay. Yeah. She says you can change it. Okay. Cool. Thank you. You bet. Yes, ma'am. I didn't put my middle name either. I didn't know it was required. I don't I think, think it was required. required. I, I think it was like a box that asked for it, that like a required form. On which form? On the T, on the TIL account? Yeah. So like I didn't put it in, <coughs> I put my middle name on my driver's license. Well, I hesitate to give you an answer until I research that, but they are very clear on ETS that when you come to test, your name has to be exact. So should we email you? Should I email you about that? Yeah, send me an email and um, I'll hold on to everybody's emails that I get and I will call TEA today and see. You know, we had one guy back in December went to take his exam and he got denied because he didn't have it on there. Now, is that because the person working the testing center when following the rules and everybody else kind of lets it slide, I don't know. But that is their policy, so I would assume that it is required. But let's make sure before you have to get on the phone with TEA, because that could take a while. Right, Carolyn? <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Good deal. We're in good shape. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call. Oh, copy of this presentation is on this website. So if you need anything, and I think the PowerPoint is also on the methods block page on certification too. Yes, ma'am. You really need to be your your A and email. Okay, at least until after you graduate, use that. I will get it done. Howdy. Howdy. So, um, before each and every one of you get cleared to go on to student teaching, you are required to come by our office. This includes everybody who is EC through 6th, that's 4th through 8th, and those that are 7th through 12th. You have to come by uh, the undergraduate advising office so you can be cleared for student teaching. Uh, very, very simple. Uh, we're open from about 8 to 5, Monday through Thursday. Uh, we have one walk-in advisor on Friday, so if you wish to walk in on Fridays, remember that it, there may be a wait, but you can do that. And we're in suite 115 of Heaton Hall. Has everybody been by to visit us at least once? Okay. So if you have not and you're getting certified 7th through 12th grade, you need to bring in your field plan which is a field of whatever you're getting certified in math or science. But anyway, we have to clear you to make sure you have the grades, you have the courses, you have everything completed so that you're eligible to student teach and get certified. Uh, there are two ways to set up an appointment. Current students go on to Sundial, which is an appointment calendar, sundial.tamu.edu forward slash TLAC, or you can make a phone call at that number. You are required to have all coursework completed prior to student teaching. If you do not have all coursework completed prior to student teaching, you could be pulled from student teaching. So we'll make sure this is done and you need to make sure that's done. It would be an embarrassment for us to go to Sci-Fi and pull you from your classroom. So there are no exceptions to that rule. It's very, very simple, but I'm going to explain this. Um, on the pre-K through 6 program, on the bottom left-hand <coughs> side, student teaching is designated as TEFT 426. So that is what the EC through 6 people will be registering for. If you stay local, it's section 500. If you go off at a distance, which is more than 35 miles out, Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, etc., it's going to be section 550. 
middle grades, math, science, middle grades, language arts, middle grades, language arts, and social studies. It's MEFB 497, same thing, section 500 local, 550 for distance placements. For Aggie Teach students, the minimum number of hours for student teaching is six, so you would also be registering for MEFB 497. It does say middle education field based. We know you're, you're gonna, you will be placed in the seventh through twelfth grade placement. It's just six hours of student teaching. So those top two, three, leading down are six hours of student teaching. It is considered full time by Texas A&M University because it's student teaching. It is not considered full time because of the six hours, but it's considered full time because you're student teaching. If you're paying, meaning your parents are paying for you to go to school, then you need to register for six hours. It's about $2,400. If you are getting federal financial Pell Grants and a considerable amount, and, if, and also if you are getting student loans, those are also kind of federal through a bank and stuff, they don't understand six hours as being full time, so you might have to register for 12 hours. Bear in mind, and this is why you might need help through the financial aid office, when you register for 12 hours of student teaching, and students have asked, do I have to work twice as hard? The answer is, of course, yes. No. You'll, you'll do your 60, 40, 50 hours a week for 12 hours, you'll be charged $4,800. So it's, your, it's incumbent upon you to find out how much money you're gonna get. You need to ask questions are, I'm going to be student teaching in the fall. It's considered full-time by Texas A&M University standards, but it's only six hours. What amount of money should I be receiving in Pell Grant money and or loans? So in other words, you have to ask these questions. So one more time, six hours is about $2,400. If you register for 12 hours, you better be getting a lot of money because it's going to be similar to a bill that you would normally be getting for a normal semester. Um, and really, there's... Not to confuse you, but there's six hours, nine hours, and 12 hours. Virtually nobody now registers for TEFB 429, okay? Most Aggie Teach students register for MEFB 497, which are paying less. Yes, ma'am. What about scholarships? Okay, very good, thank you. Most academic scholarships, especially ones through the university or through the College of Education, pay off on six hours, however, Scholarships are never released until the 12th day of class on campus. So most student teaching semesters begin prior to the university starting. So you'll have to pay your tuition fees up front, and then on the 12th class day, that money will be released, especially if it comes through the college, which we know people are student teaching. So Casey Ricketts sends an email to the uh, business service office who flags all students in our college and others, and the money has been released. Um, if you are getting an academic scholarship through another institution or through HEB or through you know, some other entity, and you wish to receive a letter from us, you just come into our office and we'll give you a letter that hopefully they will understand and pay. <coughs> So there's actually a web link that you can go to. Uh, we used to have a lot of people <coughs> going to this link when they were finding out about health insurance and stuff like that. If you just go to the, the A&M website, www.tamu.edu, and in the search engine, just type in verification of enrollment. It used to be verification of full-time enrollment. A drop-down menu will uh, pop up and one will say, Texas A&M deems these things as full-time, regardless of the number of hours you're enrolled in, internships, co-ops, and student teaching. That's just to say A&M sees it as full-time. As I said before, Pell Grant, federal government does not see it as full-time, neither does major <coughs> governments. Okay. So just in case, you need to register for 12 hours because you've done due diligence and finding out how much money you will receive. If you are staying local, it's teed, 425, section 500, and if you're going out of a distance, it's the same TED 425, section 550. That's student teaching, 12 hours. <coughs> so 
give me one second. Okay. Um, there are some students in this room that have already started a master's program. Um, a lot of school districts will require you to continue your education or do some professional uh, development because your certification now lasts for five years and depending on the school district to renew it, you will have to do certain things. We offer a completely online Master's of Education degree in uh, curriculum and instruction and you can come into our office and find out more about it. Uh, located in Heaton Hall, you'll find the uh, Graduate Advising Office and Dr. Diane Goldsby is in charge of the program. It's a great opportunity for you if you feel the necessity to start a master's degree to do so. My recommendation is definitely you want to immerse yourself in student teaching and immerse yourself in a job that you may acquire in uh, January but we'll always be here to help you if you decide to start a master's degree and we'll explain and really on our website which is tlac.tano.edu it's got undergraduate and graduate programs and we'll go into more detail but that's something you might want to look at and of course we're here for you to go out and to become excellent student teachers and teachers in the public schools and of course if you've enjoyed your time here and you think that we've done a reasonably good job to an excellent job of teaching you and preparing you, please tell more people to come see us. We're always looking for more future Aggie teachers. My name is Mrs. Parrish. No, it's not. There we go. Next slide. Okay, yeah, do you have any questions? I'm sorry. Anybody have any questions about anything that I've talked about? Yes, ma'am. If we met with our advisor already and we were not clear, Okay. Placement because we're taking a class one. okay, so let me explain that to you. There's a group of you that have already been by to be cleared for student teaching. Okay, uh, so that's a, that's a purple sheet that you received. You've been by this semester, correct? Yeah, I went yesterday, but I was not cleared because I okay, okay, I got you. Who did you visit with? Good, Missy. Get Missy. No, so Missy gave you. Nobody is cleared. That thing at the bottom is kind of irrelevant to a certain degree. Not irrelevant, let's, I'm not going to use that. But nobody is clear to actually graduate. It shouldn't say student teaching exactly, okay? Because everyone is still enrolled in classes. Nobody's registered for student teaching. And there will be a handful of you that still need classes. We're just there to make sure you understand that. Okay. You are clear to take your test. You are clear <coughs> to, for example, sign up for student teaching and stuff like that. We just want you to be aware that nobody's clear to walk across the stage and graduate. It says inadvertently, not clear for student teaching. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, ma'am. Um, will we know where we're placed before we're, like, before it's time for us to register for class? Mrs. Bates <coughs> will tell you that in just a second. She will answer those pertinent questions. If anybody have a question about advising, you are all required to come by. We've already started seeing some now. We want to see you all next week. And even though we start seeing our juniors the following week, we still want you to come in. You are required to come in. So make sure you do that, please. Either by that phone number or the sundial appointment panel. Thank you. Howdy. All right, my name is Kim Parrish. I, um, my office, Mary Ronsonet, we um, basically are going to take you from prepping for student teaching this semester, and then we will be your contacts through this semester of student teaching into graduation. And so you have already started receiving emails from student-teaching at TAMU, and we'll continue to as the semester progresses. I'm going to talk about options for student teaching first. Um, as Mr. Smith said, you can stay local. <laughs> Our definition of local is within 35 miles of Brian Cald Station. Okay? Um, I'm sure you guys are aware back in fall of 2012, um, the policy changed where in order to get all of the early field placement students in Brian Cald Station for junior methods and senior <coughs> methods, we moved student teaching into the outer districts that surround Brian Cald Station. So placements will start in the outline districts and move in. I can tell you as fall student teachers, fall 12, fall 13, fall 14, everybody that stayed local was in an outline district. No student teachers were in Bryan or called Station ISD. 
for the fall. So if you're planning to stay here, you will be driving out to one of the one of our partnering districts. 